Today we're going to talk about how to fix a saline soil. Let's first talk about what is a saline soil. Well, really all it is is where you have excess salt. So right on your soil test, you can look at the salt level that you have there or soluble salts. And when you see that number high, well, you've got an issue. What this usually stems to is a poor drainage situation. So let's talk through the steps that we would suggest you take to fix this problem. First of all, saline soils don't happen overnight. It's a long-term thing, and we just want to get expectations right here that, yes, you're going to make the next right decision for your farm and for that area of the farm, but don't expect we're going to turn everything around in a real hurry. It's going to take a little bit of time. Now, you may say, well, this problem has developed over 30 or 40 years on this farm, it's not going to necessarily take 30 or 40 years to get it fixed, but it is going to take a little bit of time. So let's start with the next best step. All right, so what it usually is, like I said already, is a drainage problem. You've got to fix that drainage. Now, let's say you have a U.S. Fish and Wildlife wetland easement out on your ground, and you say, well, I can't tile, so I'm just going to do surface drainage, and I can't even do all the surface drainage I want to do. All right, two things here. First, U.S. Fish and Wildlife easements they do not include your entire field. If you've got a quarter section, it might only be two acres that you have to avoid. It might be five acres, but you've got to find the original maps. You can talk to a lawyer if you need the lawyer to talk to Fish and Wildlife for you, but you can tile through most of your field. That's the first thing I'll tell you. The second thing is, tile is where this is at. You're not going to solve your saline problem by taking care of surface water drainage issues. Okay, That's not what this is all about. Saline issues build up because of poor subsoil drainage. So you've got to take care of that by putting drain tile in. Yes, it's nice when you have a little less standing water on the field, I get it, but the faster you get water off your field, keep in mind, the more erosion you're going to have. So there is a downside, there is a consequence to having faster surface drainage. One thing we should also mention, when it comes to chemical changes that we need to make in the soil, you really need to start with good soil testing. So you can see exactly where the nutrient levels are in your soil. There are definitely some that are out of whack when it comes to a saline soil that we need to address. And we also need to know what the strengths are in that field. So make sure you pull a complete soil analysis for those areas of the field. Now, if you've been pulling a couple of samples per field, yet you have this saline area that's only in a small part of the field, don't do that. Don't blend everything together. Get samples specifically out of those areas so we can address them the best way. Okay, where Darren's going with this is you need high levels of calcium. We want calcium to be at least 65% on your base saturation test. If it's below that, you may need to add some more calcium out to your field because drainage is about two things. Number one, do I have tile below ground so the water can get away, and two, do I have enough calcium so water can flow through my soil very well. If your magnesium percentage is super high, let's just say, then it's very possible that before the water ever even gets down to your tile, and when the water's hung up, your salt is hung up too. But with magnesium, this can be a real issue because those particle sizes are so small with the magnesium that it will prevent everything from moving down to the tile. So get your calcium level up, make sure you have good tile drainage out there, and yes, the amount of tile you need in your field may vary from one area to the next. If you've got very heavy soil and a lot of this saline issue in one part of the field, you might have to have tile every 20 feet, but in other areas it might be 70 feet apart is plenty good enough. So just keep in mind, you've got to fix that drainage internally in your soil down below the ground, so that means tile and that means good levels of calcium. And it's going to be tough to get things to grow in these areas of the farm. And there's a lot of reasons why. One, your pH is out of whack, your nutrient balance is out of whack, and now that means it's not a great environment for soil microbes. And soil microbes are so critical for getting good growth of any crop that you're going to put out there. So you may start adding microbes into the situation. You may add uh, other nutrients, as Brian has already mentioned, into the situation. And you may also add some residue out into that. If you can't get anything to grow, I've seen people incorporate bales out in there and different things just to try to get some organic material out in the soil to give some food for the microbes to try and get things to start. The one good thing I will say is a saline issue is much, much, much easier than a sodic issue to fix. 
With sodic soil, we have to take that excess sodium and turn it into a salt before we can get it leached out of the ground. With a saline issue, keep in mind salts are leachable. They will go away if you just simply have good drainage. So when you have natural rainfall or irrigation, then you can flush that out of the ground. Now, as I mentioned, irrigation you've got to look at your water. If you're having an issue with saline and you don't have a major drainage problem, what that's telling me, if it's an irrigation situation, that, uh, hey, maybe my water is not the best. Maybe look at what's your water quality and how are you doing out there. It could also be excess manure or something like that. So look at what you are putting onto the ground, whether it's water, manure, whatever other kind of fertilizer, and see if that's causing some of the problem as well. Well, one other problem you may see out in your fields is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 